I've made the bridge plate and you can see it fits in there just like a glove. Now I am a big believer in the bridge plate affecting the sound. The, the plans in most Martin guitars, I believe, are made with a maple bridge plate. There's, you know, it's a good bridge plate. It's strong. The positives of the maple are that it's strong, it's stiff, it's fine grain so that, you know, it's, it's just rigid. But the negative of the maple is that it's not very acoustically good, for lack of a better word. In other words, it doesn't resonate very well. In all the years I've been doing this, I've only heard one or two maple guitars in my whole life that I thought sounded halfway decent. Most of them sound totally dead to me. So I chose to use, rather than maple, I chose to use this exact Paduke. It's very strong, very stiff. Now, admittedly, it's a little more brittle. It's, but it's much more acoustically tuned to the instrument. It, it, it won't dampen the sound, I don't think. I think it will be a positive rather than a negative. I also made it slightly bigger. Um, there's the, the plans call for about less, slightly less than an inch and a half. I made this an inch and three quarters. Um, so, you know, that's almost three eighths bigger. But I don't think it's too big. I've seen many bridge plates much bigger. I wanted to have that reinforcement in here. Plus, I've got the good sound properties of this wood, so I don't think making it bigger is going to hurt it any. I really think this is the way to go, and that's why I'm, I'm doing it. It's just I'm basing it on my own experience, and I really think this will be the way to make the instrument sound its best. So that's why I'm putting it there. Plus, it's going to be very strong. It's going to keep the top good and rigid because it's slightly oversized and it's not much thicker. I think uh, the plans probably call for 100 thousandths. I think I made this 115 thousandths, so it's just a hair thicker even. But that I don't think that's going to hurt anything either. So we're going to get her glued in place. I decided to wipe this Paduke down with some acetone prior to gluing it to see if any resins come out of it. I don't think it's quite as bad as rosewood, so let's see. Well, actually there's quite a bit there. Let's go to a clean spot here, relatively clean spot. And let's see how much comes out. Yeah, quite a bit actually. So I'm kind of glad I did that. That'll make it adhere better to get some of those uh, resins out of there. I'm going to take the tooth blade and just tooth it a little bit. This is the side that's going to get the glue. Not making it real rough, just I don't want it glass smooth. This is another one of those things that I want it glued perfectly. I don't want it sort of glued good, I want it perfect. There are some places you can skimp on connectivity of your glue surface, but not here. You definitely want 100% adhesion on this. And actually less is more. Don't put too much glue on it, just make sure it's full coverage but get the glue as thin as you can get it on full coverage and it will stick like iron. This is a piece of uh, cherry. It's very stiff wood. I'm going to use that on the top. I've got it glass smooth and I've beveled all of the edges so that this won't press into the top. I'm going to put that uh, there as a backer to keep this flat. You really do want to squeeze as much of the glue out as you can. I know some people will argue and say you're squeezing all the glue out of the joint. I've never had that be a problem. Never. That looks just perfect. So now we're just going to do a little cleanup, get rid of the extra squeeze out there. 
Off camera, I spent a lot of time working on this stuff, and uh, so I've got I've got these back. I've got the back thinned down to one hundred thousandths of an inch. I had these decorative strips here that I believe I'm going to put uh, in here. You can see that uh, they would look pretty nice. I think. Bring it up closer where you can see it, and the. I had the width of the wood would, you know, force me to make it three piece. There was no question about that. And it just is barely wide enough with these little extra filler strips to make it perfect. So that's going to work out good. You would have to put some kind of strip down through there anyway. It just doesn't look good when you don't put a strip in there. So anyway, we would uh, do that. So I think we're going to lay it out and glue it up. Well, I've got a jig laid up here. It's all dry fitted at the moment. And this will make it easier for me to uh, fit this all together. Good way to clamp it. So we're going to get glue on the edges first thing. A lot of edges, a lot more than it looks like. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight edges to glue. Not a simple thing. One of the best things about bluegrass music is that we all get together every now and again and have a jam session. Just the other night at my house, my wife was at the front door and she was greeting him with hugs. And in the hall, I could hear a banjo. I think he was picking out some scrugs. In the corner was a dobro when he was polishing his bar. And through the front door window, I could see a tiny car. And in that little foreign car was a big old doghouse bass, which only goes to prove we only need a little space. There's tuning keys and peg heads in every size and shape with cat gut on the fiddle and nylon on the bass. A mandolin against the wall tuning up to get it right and the guitar player's strumming. I think he's set to pick all night. There's food out on the table, cold cuts, chips, and ham. Y'all pull your chairs up close, because we're going to have a bluegrass jam. I have put this all together, got glue on all eight surfaces. I tapped this forward, which tightened it up and made more glue squeeze out. I cleaned that up. Now I'm covering it with parchment paper, because everything's wet, and I'm going to set a lot of weight on this to keep it from spreading out or buckling and, and moving. Believe it or not, there's a guitar back underneath there somewhere. But I have a lot of weight on there. Those cans are pretty much full. And I <clears throat> want to keep it good and flat till it has time to dry. A drifter is only a poet with wings. He moves, but he can't learn to fly. Running in footsteps ahead of his time. With no one to hear if he cries With memories of your sweet love on the vine I thumb my way south in the rain Thinking of bridges I've burned in my life Well, as always, I left uh, the pencil mark Probably left almost a sixteenth of an inch in places Tried to keep that real consistent and it's looking real good. This will be the outside. This will be the inside. I've kind of got it figured out a certain way there. I think this side's more consistent in color and grain pattern than the other side is. So anyway, we're going to maybe do a little light sanding on it now. And then we're going to start making the braces. Here's a little preview of what it will look like down the road. Uh, it's, you know, this is a totally flat back at this point, but it'll be have some slight arch to it, and and uh, it, it'll also have a little bit of an arch from one end to the other. The sides are, have a little bit of taper to them. Each bridge causes somebody pain, but yesterday's apples are gone from the tree. Sour grapes are gone from the vine. Tomorrow a new life is starting for you While nothing is changing in mind A drifter is only a poet with wings He moves but he can't learn to fly It's right at a hundred thousandths of an inch Give or take about a thousandth Very nice, very nice 
Here's a mock-up of how the braces will go on there. Those are the braces. Um, I don't. I just have it dry clamped. I don't have it actually glued in place. I thought I'd just let it set overnight like that because these braces are bowed and so this back is actually bowed. And I thought I'd just let it set like that because I've, I've got some place I have to be and I don't have time to glue it right now. I'm going to sand the inside of this one more time before I put the braces on it. I want to, I'm actually trying to reduce a little weight and a little, you know, and, and it's still not perfectly smooth so it'll be better. With no one to hear if he cries And I'm sure that didn't affect the thickness very much or the weight, but I'm going to check it a little bit. Well, for the record, it weighs 326 grams like this. And for my, all my friends out there at Inchland, that... <laughs> that is 11.5 uh, ounces so it's uh, you know it's fairly heavy but this is a dense heavy wood it's pretty thin it's only about a hundred thousandths or maybe a little less now I'm gonna check the thickness and see how thick it is it's about two and a half millimeters thick and again for my friends in inch land that's about a hundred thousands it's real close to a hundred thousands give or take a couple of thousands depending on where you measure it so i'm going to sand some more because i want to lose a little weight and a little thickness even though we're not going to lose much uh you know every little bit helps South wind that blew in your life to warm you, but just for a while. I know what it means, sweet. Once again, I doubt it made any difference, but I'm going to just check the weight to see if there's even a gram difference. I doubt it. Well, to my surprise, it made quite a difference. It's 11.2 ounces, 300 and um, I think it was 16 grams. It changed it quite a bit. So um, I'm kind of surprised at that, but that's a good thing. Anytime you can lighten it up, that's a good thing. I'm going to sand the back here one more time with this before I put the braces on. When you lose, but someday you'll look back and smile. I can't be your lover, you don't need a friend. Well, we'll check it one more time. The final number is 314, 11.2. That's 314 grams, 11.2 ounces. Wow, that's, that's nice. It, it took it down. And let's see if the thickness, I don't think it's going to change enough to even notice it. About 95 it looks like. About 92. So maybe it did take it down a little bit. About 93 or 4. About 94. So it's pretty good. It's pretty consistent too. So I like it. I like it just, you know, a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter, never hurts anything, you know, uh, as long as you can make it structurally sound, that is. Just do a little experiment here. This orange sawdust, see what it weighs, because there's a lot of it in there now. I think my wife had a little bit of sanding dust in there too, so it, it'd be a little bit skewed, but I don't. She didn't have that much, I don't think. You can see I spilled quite a bit around on the table here. But let's just see what this weighs, just to give us an idea. Six ounces or 16 grams. That's pretty amazing <laughs> to sand that much off of your piece here. I'm pretty happy with that. It's still very strong, very, very stiff. I'm not worried about making it too thin. I guess that's the way it must be. But nothing remains as it was yesterday. You'd only be her loving me. A drifter is only a poet with wings. He moves, but he can't learn to fly. Running in footsteps ahead of his time. With no one to hear if he cries. A drifter 
poet with wings He moves but he can't learn to fly Running in footsteps ahead of his time With no one to hear if he cries This camera crashes on me quite often and it crashed just about the moment I realized that I put this brace on upside down. You know, you just screw up every once in a while. So I took it off, cleaned it off, put it back on there, and it should be fine now. I won't make that mistake on this one. I'll get it on right, because now I know to pay attention to that, which I knew anyway, but I just didn't. That's the one thing people do better than any, anything, is make mistakes. With no one to hear if he cries Well, that ought to be good. Let that dry five or six hours and it'll look fine. I've measured everything. Everything looks straight and I had them obviously marked where they go and then I uh, measured them in addition just to make sure they were all parallel and they look real good. issues plus the air conditioner kept turning on and seemed like whenever I get the air conditioner off the camera wouldn't work and vice versa. So I made it quite a ways here. This doesn't look all that great yet. It's still pretty roughed in. So I've you know cleated if you will uh, this um, seam that goes down the back to make that stronger and it's quarter sawed spruce that's turned with the grain going across ways so it's uh and that's a standard way of doing it the, these braces here have been shaved the back is actually uh you know if it, well, it depends on which side you're looking at it on this side it would be concave um, it's like this i'm exaggerating it a little bit but it's like that and when we put it on the sides uh, it will actually also be concave this direction a little bit. I'm just working on cleaning all this up and I'm, I'm taking my little finger plane and rounding these over the best I can. I can't get in there real good with the finger plane because there's, uh, you know, I'm hitting the braces with the end of the plane. So I'm going to have to take a, a chisel that's really sharp and get in here and clean these up on the ends like that. I'm going to have to sharpen this chisel. It's not sharp enough right now again. And then I'll sand them all down and get them all cleaned up and we'll be just about ready to put this back on the guitar. I've sharpened the chisel. I tell you cutting across this end grain like this uh, is a tough way to go with a chisel. But it's, it, it's so sharp that it does cut it. It's just you know, even even very sharp, it's still hard to cut a soft wood across the grain. 
it likes to break or tear or whatever but if you can uh, you know rotate it a little bit as you're pushing forward it'll uh, cut a lot better and that's what I'm doing The plans call for reinforcement on the sides of the guitar on the inside and I think it's a good idea myself especially with this Paduke. Um, it's an incredibly brittle wood. Um, that's also what I think gives it its good sound. It's, it's very hard but you can break it. Uh, you know if you, if you pop it real hard it would like to break. So by putting these reinforcements in there across the grain, they don't look the greatest, but they will, you know, keep the instrument intact, I believe, and make it much stronger. So I'm electing to put them in there. I've built them before with and without them, and I prefer to build it with, with these cloth reinforcements. So here's what they look like on the inside of the guitar. You can see how they're going in there. And then I take a damp cloth and pat them down tight. In this case, I'm using Elmer's glue, just plain old Elmer's white glue. It's a uh, very good wood glue, actually. And so it works great for the cloth and for this both without making too big of a mess. I'm putting them about every two inches or so. In the plans, they show them at an inch and a half to two inches. Sure you can see I've got the guitar body all mocked up here. The back is pretty much finished now. I've got most of the insides finished. I'm pretty happy with the way that all turned out. The back looks like it's got the right curvature to it and everything. It looks real, real nice. Uh, if I'm making an editorial comment on my own work, I would say it's a hair thicker, pretty much body-wise, all the way around. And I say a hair, I'm talking maybe 15 thousandths thicker than standard. So, in other words, there's a little bit more airspace inside than standard. Um, I could take that down a little bit more. I think it's going to be fine. The only other thing I see is that the neck block isn't setting, making full contact on the back. And I'm going to work on that just a little bit. I think I can improve that fit a little bit. But otherwise, everything else from the way I can tell, looking inside it and everything fits up really, really nice. It's going to be a real good guitar. Here's your last look at it before we glue the back on it. Yeah, you can see all those white strips in there, and that's, uh, you know, they're really adhered well to these sides, and I think that's going to make these sides a lot stronger so that they don't crack down the road. You can hear there's a lot of resonance going on. Just tap it around. It's 
really a very resonant top. You can see that we've got our bridge plate in there. We've got our uh, reinforcement, and I just used a type of surgical gauze and soaked it down with glue, and, and that forms to this better. A lot of folks take and cut it a bunch of ways and put the, you know, uh, cloth on there but when you cut it like that then you've lost a lot of your strength that you're going after so I like the gauze method it conforms to it better and it gets really hard and really stiff so that's a very stiff joint now um, it works it works for me and that's really about it everything else looks good in there I've cleaned it up real well I've got the I've done some more sanding on these edges and got the top block fitting uh, the neck block fitting to the back pretty well. It's, uh, I think it's ready to go. Let's get her glued up. I moved to the city and I tried to fit in. I thought of my father. I think that looks real good. Let's get her on there. I'm going to start at the front. I've got my center line marked on my back and I've got my center line joint here to line it up with. We'll start with that lineup first and I have it pulled to the block because those that's the way it fits. Anyway, I have it pulled forward here up to the block. The braces inside kind of dictate how far up I can pull it. How the crops would get in. I could hear him say, Son, you should move away. He said, Farm life is dying. Son, please don't stay. It's been sitting overnight, so let's see what we ended up with. Feels real structurally sound, I can tell you that right now. All the edges will need to be trimmed up to match up good. I returned for a visit. Well, we have a guitar body. It uh, feels real nice, solid, light. It's not real heavy. Um, you know, I try to keep them light. Uh, the, they'll vibrate better, but you gotta have them structurally strong. I think this thing's very strong. You know, it's just got a real nice feel to it as far as uh, the body goes. I think it's gonna be a heck of a guitar. We're going to leave it right there for this episode. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends. Please click the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate that.